Karkosa Serinegara is a Malaysian heritage building. Karkosa was the residence for British High Commissioner during the colonial period. Karkosa is a luxury bungalow and it was built over 100 years ago. Karkosa originally built as the official residence and guest house of the British High Commissioner Malaya, Sir Frank Swettenham. Karkosa Serinegara consists of two colonial mansions. Karkosa and Serinagara, located on two adjacent hill. The name Karkosa was chosen by Sir Frank Swetterham itself. According to a letter written by Sir Frank Swetterham, the name Karkosa is the portmanteau of the Italian words Cara and Casa, which together means desirable dwelling. It is now owned by the Malaysian government, started from 2019. Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture take over Karkosa Sri Negara. Karkosa Sri Negara is located in Perdana Lake Garden, Kuala Lumpur. Karkosa Sri Negara is located in its own 16 hectare landscape garden. Above the Lake Garden of Kuala Lumpur on the western edge of the city. With the nice landscape garden, Karkosa is just a few kilometers away from the heart Kuala Lumpur. Karkosa was constructed in 1896 by the first British Resident General of the Federal Malayan States, Sir Francis Wetterham, as his official residence. The construction started from 1896 to 1897. Meanwhile, Srinagar was built in 1913 as a government house for important guests of colonial government, and it was alternatively known as King House. It was designed by Arthur Benison Hubbeck, who was a British architect and a soldier and who is also responsible for designing other popular monuments such as Sultan Abdul Samad Reading and Kuala Lumpur Railway Station. The work begins under the construction supervision of the State Engineer of Selangor Public Works Department, Carl Edwin Spooner and author Carl Norman. British was creating a replica of Cotswolds in the heart of tropical Malaya. The cost of construction for the Karkosa was $69,000 for roads, sites, stable and water supply plus the cost of the house, offices and kitchen amounting to $62,376. An official housewarming party complete with a lavish fancy dress ball was held by Frank Sudanum to celebrate the opening of the new mansion on 29 August 1898 as reported by the Singapore Free Press and Mercantile Advertisers dated 8 September 1898. The theme of the party is West Folly Hill. It was chosen was unaddressed letters due to its white and elevated book written by Swedenham Land overlooking the beautiful himself. The event was attended by the British high-ranking officers serving in the British colonial government in Malaya together with their wife and other selected guests. Both buildings, which are Karkosa and Serinagara, were recognized as historical buildings in accordance with the National Heritage Act 2005 on 6 July 2007. The National Heritage Act 2005 clearly states its responsibilities and role in the field of conservation and preservation of heritage. This means Various inheritance are subject to this act and are given protection in accordance with the provisions that have been preserved in the act. 
The need for protection and conservation is very important so that it can continue to be enjoyed and be a source of pride to the country. The Negara consists of two colonial mansions. The first is Carcosa, is being constructed in 1896. Sri Negara, formerly King's House, was built in 1913 as an official guest house for visiting VVIPs. Carcosa served as the Imperial Japanese Army's headquarters in Kuala Lumpur during the Japanese occupation of Malaya. Malaysian Federal Constitution was drafted at Karkosa Sri Negara between 1955 until 1957. Malaysian Federation Agreement was signed at Sri Negara by all nine Sultans of Malaysia. During that time, our Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman gave Karkosa Sri Negara to the British government as a goodwill gesture for the independence of Malaya. Karkosa Sri Negara and its 16 hectare lands remains as property of British government and functions as official residence for important officials visiting Malaya. British High Commissioner official vacates Karkosa Sri Negara on 31st August 1957 during Malaya's Independence Day, Malaya is renamed to Malaysia. After the return of Karkosa to Malaysian ownership in 1987, Karkosa and Sri Negara were restored and opened as a boutique hotel in 1989, with much of the colonial architecture and interior design is maintained. The same year, the 1989 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting was held in the city and Karkosa Sri Negara would host Queen Elizabeth II and the head of Commonwealth, Prince Philip. However, despite the quality of the hotel, it is closed down for business right after the lease expiry in December 2015. In addition, it is now under the care of the Property and Land Management Division of country's Prime Minister's Department. President of the International Council for Monuments and Heritage Sites of Malaysia, Datuk Haji Dara Abdul Majid said, both buildings have been recognized as heritage buildings according to the National Heritage Act 2005 on 6 July of 2007, but it feels sad when it has been abandoned for several years. We got the opportunity to interview the former British Commissioner who is Sir Garrett Templer grandsons today. Let us hear how he feels after visiting Carcosa Sri Negara. Uh, it, was, it was a wonderful experience for me actually. My, my grandfather sadly died seven years before I was born so I don't have a personal recollection of him. So this was lovely as a kind of, it provides a sort of, you know, strange like a point of contact between me and him, you know. I can kind of begin to imagine his history just by walking through where he worked when my father grew up so you know it, it holds a very special place in my family history and it's lovely for me to come and visit it and experience that myself. There is a popular mythos related with the Carcosa Sri Negara which is known as Lady in White. This mythos is told by local folklore. It has a ghostly appearance in a white dress, roams the neo-gothic and Tudor revival hallways of the Carcosa and manifests the main staircase of the Banglo. Asian Heritage Museum Sudiamber High EHM Chief Executive Officer K. Kitan told that the legend said that she is the late wife of the first British High Commissioner of Malaya, Sir Frank Swettenham. Tan also said that he has not any personal encounter with the lady in white, but the true or not, the story just adds the colour to the historic property. The purpose of construction was pure as the official residence and guest house of the British High Commissioner in Malaya. The idea to build this building in 1896 when Britain first resident general of the Federated Malay State, Sir Francis Wittenham, was suggested that an official resident must be built on a hill heading towards Jalamsara in an area 
of 1.818 hecta near to the residency building. For the present purpose of construction is as tourism attraction as it has changed into a museum under Asian Heritage Museum. The design of the building was largely influenced by Tudor and Neo-Gothic style with eclectic fusion. The style is said to be eclectic partly because it includes higher ceiling and wider verandas. The European style was augmented in this way after British architect and engineer observed that similar practice in Malay houses helped keep building cool. The building was designed by Arthur Benison Hubbard who was British architect and a soldier under instruction for a state engineer of Selangor Public Works Department, Charles Edwin Spooner. Unlike modern building in which the building is held up by steel or steel reinforced column, in Kakosa the walls support the weight of the building. Because of this, the walls are thick. In Kakosa, the lower walls are thicker than the upper walls. The architectural feature of Kakosa symbolizes luxury because it is located on a hill. It is also designed with guest room and various facilities such as swimming pool. The plans provided for a ground floor that could accommodate major social gatherings and an upper floor with private setting room, study and seven main bedrooms, each with its own strength of veranda. The outside of the building were design tables and several tennis courts. The floor finished in the main hall and piano room used imported tie from India. Kakosa Serinagar also has symmetry and balance in their facade. Great architecture utilizes symmetry and propositions such as the golden ratio to design their building. This help to construct a building which the entire urban centers is built on the symmetry grid pattern as in the sign of rational orders. The pediment in Kakosa and Greek architecture is quite similar. A pediment is an organometer triangle formed by tropical low pitch gable roof used to ordain a building main entrance. The triangular areas of Kakosa building designed in plain. Hence, relatively less reflective elements open in the Kakosa. Pediments are traditionally considered as a building feature which also been designed in the Kakosa. In addition, a tablature was designed for the roof of Kakosa building. The architect of Kakosa inspired this tablature by the roof of Greek temple. The decorative pattern on the tablature found in Kakosa looks much similar to those in Tudor revival architecture. Moreover, columns in Kakosa also designed like a Greek architecture. The row of columns outside the house body of Kakosa also engage a wall and become pilastrate that support the wall articulate its surface. Two columns establish a transparent special membrane by the visual tension between their shaft. The design of the column or fortress with ten posts act as support structure for the building. Baranda is also influenced by the Malay architecture was designed. The purpose of Baranda were to allow ventilation throughout the building. Kakosa was using concrete for their building material. Concrete has been used as the main material throughout the building. Concrete is an artificial columnar stone made essentially of Portland cement, water and aggregate. The concrete flooring was designed Kakosa reinforced with expanded metal. Moreover, columns also designed by cast iron filled with concrete. The building of Kakosa Seri Negara also used the woods for construction material. However, only certain parts wooden were used in this building. Normally, wooden material were used to construct the roof, timber buttress, and timber lovers. The casement window also was designed by frame in woods which suit to the revival style. As we can see, the flooring material inside the Kakosa building was also made by the wooden. For the ceiling, building of Kakosa Serinagara used the plaster ceiling. These ceilings are made of plaster box supported by a metal frame. They are made to improve interior design, look more polished and elegant, and they can contain intricate carving too. 
Gagosa seri negara also use sandstone tile as the flooring material and pathway. Sandstone is a natural choice and beautiful classic look when it comes to flooring. The construction of the building is Tudor Revival. The principle of architecture is symmetry balance. The building is actually a symmetrical Greek architecture utilize symmetry and proportion such as the coordination to design the building. This helps to construct a building which the entire urban has a sense of rational order. The construction method used for the Carcosa Srinagara building is half timbering. Half timbering was a Tudor era construction method in which timber frame for the building will be constructed. But then, the space between timbers were filled in with plaster or brick instead of more wood. Half timbering is a way of constructing wood frame structure with the structural timbers exposed. This medieval called timber framing. A half timber building wears its wood frame on its sleeve. The wooden wall framing starts Cross beams and braces are exposed at the outside of the building, and the space between the wooden timbers are filled with plaster, brick, or stone. Originally, a common type of building method in 16th century, half timbering has become decorative and non structural. Flying buttress to build up taller as they could easily spread the weight of building height, point arches. That means to be both support system and a decorative feature. Using arches open up possibility of having vaulted ceiling in neo gothic style with the ability to have larger windows to create light interior. Casement windows group in a row of three or more that frame in wood which suit to the revival style. Porches with or columns act as a support structure for the building. The Carcosa Mansion started its function as a hotel in 1989 and ended operation in 2016. Marketed as a luxurious heritage boutique hotel, much of the mansion's colonial architecture and interior were preserved, carefully adapted, and complemented with colonial-themed hotel service. The original space and layout were designed as a mansion and British residence office. The two-story mansion has more than eight bedrooms, including the master bedroom and guest rooms, a spacious living room surrounded by a corridor terrace or veranda at the crown and first floor, and 11 bathrooms. In 1989, during Queen Elizabeth's II visit, she occupied Swettenham's spacious suite rooms, which had been redecorated in the Victorian style. In the year 1997, the mansion was renovated again, acquiring a spa, satellite TV, and upgraded kitchen while preserving the original appearance of the building. Besides the interior preservation, to meet the hotel requirement, especially the number of rooms and facilities, part of the corridor and terrace at the ground and the first floor was closed for new rooms and toilets. The historical evidence of Carcosa's interior features was challenging to trace. Most of the historical documents, such as old photos, captured the exterior part of the building architecture. However, through the investigation of the function of the original space and rooms, the interior features of this building are luxuriously tailored to the status of the residence for the British resident general. The ground floor lobby area was built with a stunning wooden staircase. Since the building was influenced by the Tudor style, most of the interior decoration elements were from wood. 
the ceiling beams, window and door casings, windscreens, and staircases tended to be dark and heavy, made of hardwood, finished with wax. Based on the site inspection, all wooden elements, especially in the lobby area, were painted in cream and thick paint had covered the carvings, the surface of the staircase, newel post, and cap. This is due to the new user wanting the interior scheme of Carcosa to be appropriate with the new function of Carcosa. There are several historical events that were held in Carcosa Serenagara. First, the Merdeka Agreement. This event is to ensure Malaya would finally be free to choose its own destiny was signed by the nine Malay rulers on 5th August 1957. As a sign of goodwill to the British, Tunku Abdurrahman gifted the deeds of Carcosa and its land to the British government. Second, the 1989 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting was held in the city and the Carcosa Serenagara would host Queen Elizabeth II, the head of the Commonwealth, and Prince Philip. By coincidence, Hollywood was looking for the right place to shoot its latest blockbuster, which is Crazy Rich Asians, and the colonial charm of the place led them to use the building as the home of Nick Young, the hero of the movie.